Hi, today I'm going to talk about when high strain rate testing is needed. High strain rate testing of polymers is pretty tricky and it's pretty expensive and the data is not always so great. So the question is, can we sometimes avoid doing these experiments? And if so, when can we avoid it? Is there, and is there anything that can guide us to determine what to do about this? And it turns out there is something we can learn here by looking at temperature sweep data from DMA tests. So that's what I want to talk about in this video. So let's start talking about a thermoplastic cool polyester called Arnitel. And this is a material that I tested at different strain rate. I measured the stress strain response. And if I plot the, the stress value at the given strain, sort of a secant stress value, as a function of strain rate, I pretty much get a, lo a linear line here, a straight line, if I plot stress versus a logarithm of strain rate. And this is really awesome. What this means is that I can measure the stress strain response, say at two different strain rates, and I am able to not only interpolate between these strain rates, I can extrapolate outside that range up to very high strain rates, in this case, even up to 1,000 per second in strain rates without doing any experiments. This is really good, obviously. It saves time, it saves money. So this is a good thing if you have a material like this. But then there are other polymers. This is a polymer called PVDF. And if you measure the stress, the yield stress, as a function of strain rate for this material, at small strain rates, uh, up to moderate strain rates, it looks like the, there is a linear dependence again between the stress, uh, yield stress, and the, the, the strain rate. But then if you do some really, really high strain rate tests on PVDF, you get a very different response. And you can't predict this high strain rate response from the small, lower strain rates. Clearly, this is a case that if you, if you care about high strain rates, you may not know that the, the material behaves like this over here. So therefore, it would be very useful to do some high strain rate testing in a case like this. So the question then, of course, becomes, when is the, the stress versus logarithm strain rate linear? And when is it bilinear? And what can we learn about this? Is this, is this something we can actually predict before we end up doing the experiments? So, Let's talk about first polycarbonate. If you do yield stress versus strain rate for polycarbonate, you get this bilinear response uh, type of behavior. And then if you take this polycarbonate and you do a DMA temperature sweep on it, as shown on the left there, storage modulus versus temperature and loss modulus versus temperature, we see typical uh, DMA traces of it. We see that as the temperature is going down, the, modulus is, uh, the, the storage modulus is going up. We see the glass transition temperature over here, and this is called the alpha transition. And then there is another peak in the loss modulus over to the left at the lower temperatures, and this is called the beta transition for polycarbonate. And uh, what we see here, of course, is that at the lower temperature, the material becomes stiffer. But similarly to the right, we see at higher strain rate, the material becomes stiffer too. And if the temperature goes up, the material becomes softer. And if the strain rate goes down, the material becomes softer. So this, there is some kind of correlation between temperature and time that really is always true for polymers. This is time temperature kind of superposition in some sense. You can convert time and temperature. If you, if you really understood the material, you should be able to do this conversion. In other words, if you have this DMA trace here to the left at different temperatures, maybe you can map temperature into a strain rate and predict the strain rate response simply by looking at the modulus versus temperature type of behavior. And that is really what I want to talk about here. What's kind of cool about this, if you're looking at the storage modulus here, there is a slope here, and then the slope changes at the beta transition. And that's what we see here in the loss modulus too. There is another mechanism that gets activated at a low temperature. That's exactly what we see when we look at yield stress versus strain rate too. So the reason for having a bilinear response here is due to the beta transition in the material that gets activated at low temperatures or at high temp uh, strain rates. So that's really important, of course, because that guides us to understand this. Now, let's take a look at Arnitel, the copolyester that I talked about earlier. I show that uh, the stress versus strain rate is linear in this range here. And if I plot at a, the DMA temperature sweep, this is just the storage modulus versus temperature. It looks very linear and nice, and that's why we see that here. But 
But if you look at even lower temperatures, we see an upturn, a pretty drastic upturn in the storage modulus here. What this suggests to me is that if you had gone to even higher strain rate for this type of copolyester, you should see a bilinear response too. And we can detect that simply by looking at the storage modulus versus temperature here. And we have this transition and change that occurs here. Very interesting. We haven't proven what strain rate that would correspond to, of course, but that's something one would expect at even higher strain rates potentially. Um, if you have a linear uh, domain here between uh, stress and strain rate or modulus versus temperature, there is a, a simple equation one can use to convert back and forth here. There is a temperature on one side and we have strain rate on the other side. There's one single parameter here, A, that converts between the two. And depending on the material, this A parameter will be a different value. Um, for um, polycarbonate, for example, A has been shown to be around 17 Kelvin uh, as a value. Now, let's look at PVDF again. PVDF was a, is a material that has a bilinear response for stress versus strain rate. And on the left, I have plotted storage and loss modulus for PVDF. And we see that we have a transition here. We have an alpha transition and a beta transition over here at this point. And that's why we see the bilinear response again. And nothing particularly surprising about that, but that shows how that goes. What I try to do is to take this data here and figure out, can we actually predict this in some very simple way? So what I did was, well, um, this is a bilinear response, but why don't we try something simple like the WLF equation, which is a time temperature superposition idea that maps temperature to time. So we can use the WLF equation to map back and forth between these. The problem, of course, for PVDF, I don't know what these WLF parameters should be. So I simply picked some values they give me the results that I want. I haven't proven that this, of course, is, is, is a valid model or anything, except that if I pick these WLF parameters that are shown here, um, the red dots are the experimental predictions, and the blue ones are the predictions that come from the DMA temperature sweep. If I convert it back to time domain, stra a strain rate domain, uh, using these parameters, showing that hmm, this, there is something going on here. Perhaps this could be useful. I haven't proven this it was something I has quickly tried out to show that um, there is a correlation between temperature and strain rate. And this is something that can be very interesting and potentially useful in the future. So to summarize, for some polymers, the yield stress is linear dependent on the strain rate. For other polymers, it's not. It's bilinear. And this is really, really useful, of course, if the material response is linear. You can just do two low strain rate tests and you can predict the whole domain of, of strain rates up to larger strain rates. And what I've shown here is the DMA temperature sweep can be very useful to determine if there is a potential for a bilinear response by simply looking for beta transitions in the loss modulus in the DMA temperature sweep. And I would say to end there, if there anyone looking for research topics, I think it would be quite interesting to research this a little bit more, to look at equations and the mechanisms for converting between temperature and strain rate. I, I threw out the WLF idea here. Not sure if that's the best way to do it, but it's one way that one could think about this at least. So if this is something you're interested in, that, that would be a cool topic to, to research some more. If you have any questions about any of this, you can ask them below.